Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be bringing you my guide on how to simply process photos of the Orion Nebula in Adobe Photoshop. Now this image here behind me is 156 30 second exposures that I took last night of the Orion Nebula using my Celestron Rasa 8 and the IDAS NBZ, which is a really good filter for that telescope, by the way. But yeah, this is gonna be really simple. So I'm a pretty scientific-minded astrophotographer, so I don't do a ton of processing. So if you're a beginner, you might be able to glean a lot of information, tips and tricks from this, this tutorial. And even if you're an expert, you might be able to glean a few things. But it will be pretty simple and pretty quick. And for me, that's what works and what I like in my images. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start screen sharing here and I'll show you uh, what I got. Okay, so as I mentioned, here is my stacked image of the Orion Nebula in Astro Pixel Processor. Uh, this is 156 images of 30 seconds apiece. And this took about four hours to stack, mainly because the ZWO183MC Pro camera that I use has pretty large file sizes due to the amount of megapixels it has. So we'll go ahead and open this in Adobe Photoshop now and uh, get on with the tutorial. Okay, so here we are. You can see the image looks actually pretty amazing here. This is without touching it, the unprocessed stacked image. You can see the Running Man Nebula is distinctly showing lots of gases. Nebulous Cloud is really showing here. So just 30 second exposures on an F2 system really pulls out a lot of data. Uh, the first thing that I do in my processing though is I crop it. So if I zoom in here, you can actually see that uh, the edges are a little wonky. So if you go around can see some dead pixels and just really strange artifacts here. And the reason this happens is because of dithering. Now what dithering is, is just barely moving your telescope by a pixel or two each image. And that really helps remove noise. It can detect dead pixels. Your software can then detect dead pixels and remove them. So dithering is actually really handy, but it does misalign the stacks just a tad bit. So we're just going to go ahead and crop that first. So I'm gonna click the crop tool um, over here. And I like to use the original ratio. So the, the, the aspect of the image basically just stays the same or the frame stays the same. So I'm just going to slightly come in here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just to make sure I don't crop too much. So we'll go right about there and we can always do a little bit more if we need to okay that looks good good all right so we're gonna go ahead and accept that okay all right so there is the uh the cropped image things are already looking good here but as i mentioned with the orion nebula um it's really easy to pick up a lot of data really quickly so this makes the core overexposed pretty much all the time. I would say probably 95% of imagers overexpose the core. And that's totally fine because you're going to get all this outside detail. And that's where the real beauty of the Orion Nebula lies in. But we're gonna go ahead and try and tame this down a little bit um, and, and then kind of preserve these outside details. So the first thing that I like to do is just adjust the, uh, the curves. So I'm just going to click down here and make sure your layers tab is open. If it's not, um, just go to uh, window and then go to layers and just make sure that's checked. So you have your background layer here and some people open multiple copies. I just, because this is so fast, I just go through it pretty quick. So I don't do that, but I'm just going to click down here and click on curves. Now this is going to open up our little curves menu here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just kind of play around with it and get a feel for the image. So if I go up, obviously I'm gonna get a lot brighter. I go down, it's gonna get a little bit darker. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave that right in the center here. And then if you click on this button here, it will actually, and then start hovering over your image, you'll see over on the, the curves menu, it's gonna show you where these colors are falling on that curves line. So um, this bright white exposed core is obviously gonna to be towards the end. All right, so I'm gonna pull down this, this slider and just see what it's gonna to do to my core if I just go down slightly. Okay, so it helps a little bit, kind of tones things down, um, but you'll notice the rest down here is also gonna be pulled down a little bit. So I'm just gonna slightly pull that back up. And it's just kind of a little bit of a game here. 
and then pull this one down just a little bit. And maybe because space is black, I'm going to make this just a little bit darker over here. Okay. And you don't want to go too much on your first try. It's like I said, it's kind of a, a game. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to <clears throat> click on this little eye here to hide the layer and see the difference. So already I'm liking that difference quite a bit. You can see here the core is a little bit toned down when we when we look at it that way. So I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the curves tab. And I'm going to play a little bit more here, kind of drag this down a little more. Okay. I don't want to lose too much detail in here. So I'm actually going to make another little dot and slide things up just a little bit. Maybe tone things down just a hair more. Okay. So I actually really like that. And I'm pretty satisfied with that already now. There's some people who will be like, whoa, you're you're crazy. Like there's so much more you could do with this data. And that's definitely, definitely true. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the saturation tab and just increase this ever so slightly. Just try and get a little bit more color out of those, those clouds. But if you go, you know, if you go too far, it's way overdone. So again, it's just Processing for me is just very simple, subtle adjustments. I don't do a whole lot to the images here. So just going to uh, maybe even a little less than that. And the running man is a, a good um, quality indicator for me. If I start blowing out those blue or overshadowing those blues with reds, then I know I'm going too far. So it's still pretty blue here, but I'm just going to go probably about three on the saturation tab. And then I'm going to go to the reds, pick the reds menu, just increase the reds a tad bit more. Let's try three. Okay. All right. So with those changes done, now I'm going to go ahead and hit this eye here again and see if I like the difference. Yep. So just a, a subtle different. So I'm going to leave that. Um, and now basically, um, what I'm going to do is you can despeckle at this point and remove some noise. Or what I like to use is Carboni's actions. Now I did have to pay for these. So I'm going to show you the despeckled version first, um, in case you don't have Carboni's actions. Uh, but these are actually really handy in in denoising the image. So again, I took a lot of um, exposures already. So that helps with the noise. Just having a bunch helps with the signal to noise. Um, but let's go ahead and despeckle the image and show you the difference. So I'm just going to go to uh, filter, noise, despeckle. And I'll show you what that did here. Let's just zoom in on a portion. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to hit control Z and undo that show you kind of the difference between um, a despeckled image and a non. So now we're going to redo that. And you can see it does a little bit, but not a whole lot. And that's why I use the Carboni's uh, actions for space noise reduction. It does a really good job in their specific tools for astronomy. So now I'm going to show you the difference there. So I'm going to undo my despeckle and then zoom back out. And you'll see the difference here is pretty awesome. So the only thing I would do first before you move on to Carboni's actions is um, go ahead and save your, your Photoshop file um, because to do these actions, you need to flatten the image. So um, go ahead and save first. And then once that's done, go to uh, layer and then flatten image. Now, don't do this if you're not already satisfied with what you've kind of got going on. You can adjust your curves and stuff more if you need to. But I'm going to go ahead now and go to Carboni's actions, and I'm going to go space noise reduction and just run that. It's pretty quick.
you can see it's just targeting the actual dark spaces in the background. The stars are excluded from that. Okay, so now I'll show you the difference here in what that does. You can probably already see the difference, but so I'm going to hit Control Z and undo that, and that's going to give me a new layer. So right now we're looking at the effect with the noise reduced, and let's turn this off. And that's what we had before. So a lot noisier. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit more. So this is before Carboni's uh, space noise reduction tool, and then I'll hit it and after. See, much better right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep that. So I'm just going to uh, go to layer and flatten image flatten image again. And now I'm going to run the deep space noise reduction. It's similar, um, but even makes things even better. So we'll run that one now. And again, you know, if you don't have these tools, that's totally fine. You can do a, a smart, uh, you can run the smart noise tool and get similar results that way by doing a mask. It just takes longer. Uh, again, this is just my simple guide and it really, when I'm not, you know, making a video, I can do all of this in about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how picky I am with the image. But I, again, I'm, I'm pretty scientific minded, so I don't do a whole lot to these. And then you should see the area that is excluded from this noise reduction. Yep. So you can see it's really only targeting a lot of that background noise. And that's, that's the goal. Okay, so that one is now done as well. So I'm going to go ahead and, and undo it so I can show you the difference. So zoom in a little bit here. So you can see this is what it looks like after. And if I undo it, this is what we had before. And then we'll do it again. So a decent improvement there. Before, after. It's pretty subtle, and that's what I'm aiming for. Again, I'm pretty... Pretty subtle in all of my, my processing. So now it does look like I need to crop just a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the crop tool. It's on original ratio and just slide that in a tiny bit more. That probably just right there is enough to do it. Uh, you can recenter if you want, but I think this is okay. So I'm just going to check that. Perfect. There we go. So I'm pretty happy with this so far. The Another thing that I'm going to do uh, the Rasa horizontally flips images, so this is actually kind of backwards from what most people would realize. So I'm going to go to Image and go to Image Rotation, Flip Canvas Horizontal. And there we go. So the orientation is much better now and it looks a lot better. All right, so the next step for me is pretty critical, and that's just to take like a five or ten minute break and come back and see the image in a new light. Uh, you get to looking at these images long enough and you start to miss things, so a uh, five to ten minute break is, is always really handy. All right, so that break actually was pretty helpful because already I see something that I want to change a little bit, and that's just to try and tame this core down a little bit more. So again, I had this uh, um, deep space noise reduction here and I liked what that did, so I'm going to go ahead and um, flatten image and just start fresh here and go to the curves and see if we can just lighten that a little bit more. Now I'm going a little aggressive here just to kind of see the effect. I'm not necessarily going to keep that, just kind of see. Okay, so that helped a little bit. All right, so again, it's probably a matter of preference or if anything at this point, but we can make it look just a little bit better yeah see right there that's that's a little bit too much for me so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and tone this down just a bit try and level it as much as i can get a nice smooth curve here okay all right so let's click out of that and then i'm just gonna undo this Oh yeah, see that, to me that looks a lot better and it's still preserving all of these details here. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. 
and then maybe just play with the curves a little bit more see if there's anything else you know i think that works a little i can start to see a few of the stars in here and then what i can do is i can go to um, saturation and just boost the saturation of the image just a little bit more. And there we go. So that's pretty much it. Um, again, it's pretty simple what I do here. Um, not terribly complex. And yeah, I'm sure I could pull out a lot more in, in PixInsight running uh, different things. Um, but this is just a simple processing guide. It's not meant to be anything uh, difficult and uh, yeah it's really just kind of playing around with it and seeing what you like and what you don't like so when i'm done i just save another separate version of this um, and that way i can have multiple steps to go back to and then yeah finish it off all right well that is the tutorial so you can see that was pretty simple and i think most people that you know view my instagram would be pretty shocked that that's pretty much all that i do uh, some people process for hours and that's just not me I'm um, very simple in how I process my astro images. But you know, that's the beauty behind astrophotography and astro processing. Some people can, you know, learn a method or two from someone and then a tool or another feature from someone else and combine that into their own workflow. So each person can process the way that they like to. Uh, again, mine is simple, but I hope that this tutorial helped you learn how to kind of tame the core, pull out a little bit of the detail in the edges and maintain just the integrity of the image. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to uh, subscribe for more telescope reviews, equipment reviews, and tutorials. Um, as always, I you know hope you have a great day. Uh, have fun doing your astrophotography and clear skies.